Welcome from a cold, wintry Cape Town morning to another edition of Tyron Paulson Drives. Now, today I started this episode with a question, and that is, what car comes to mind when I say the words zero to 100 kilometers an hour in under four seconds? Now, I know you're probably thinking performance sports car or even a supercar, right? But what if I told you that you can get a subcompact SUV that's under a million rand that will do that in 3.6 seconds. All of this while not having any fancy aeros, sporting some twin turbos, some loud exhaust, or, well, even an engine. You're probably gonna tell me that, well, that's impossible. Well, just like me, you'd be wrong because the impossible is here. This is the Volvo EX30 Ultra Twin Motor Performance. It has two electric motors making over 300 kilowatts and accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.6 seconds. That, just like I said in the intro, is even supercar territory. Yet, it looks like the car you drive on the school run every day. The Volvo EX30 is just over 4.2 meters long and 1.8 meters wide, making it significantly smaller than its biggest sibling, the XC40. Dare I even say it's a lot more hatchback than SUV with those kind of proportions. The styling in front is still very much Volvo-esque, but it's a lot more, well, kind of sleeker, yet rounded and boxy all at the same time. I know it sounds confusing, but it's a lot more futuristic looking compared to its, well, older siblings but not so far out that you kind of go, nah, no, mm -mm, it's kind of weird, no thank you. The classic Volvo Thor headlights, it's still there, but it's redesigned with a modern look into this no grill look that we see in many EVs nowadays, but it still retains that classic Volvo badge of honor. What I do love though is how it kind of sleeks down in the front here with this perfect little creases and lines. It just gives it that more aggressive kind of look to it. And in black, it looks like a, well, Scandinavian Batmobile. Down the side, it's more sleekness with creases in the right places and this little kink in the seat pillar, again, gives it hatchback styling. The aero-efficient rims are designed to smooth the airflow across the wheel and also onto the wheels for cooling. All in all, the design means less drag which in turn means more efficiency. My favorite part of this car is definitely the rear. It's minimalistic, which is by the way, a word you're gonna hear quite a lot during this entire review, but still, it still retains that classic Volvo look just like the front with this rear light design, which is reminiscent of like the original V60 station wagon from back in the day. But now it's all LED and looks a lot more modern and sleeker and cleaner in my opinion. Overall, this car's design really does appeal to me because, well, it kind of reminds me of a, of a hatch because I've got a thing for hatchbacks. And I know this is not a hatch, but it gives me that, well, hot hatch kind of vibe. Now let's talk about the model range of the EX30. There are three versions available and it starts off with a single motor version that has a 51 kilowatt hour battery into it. That should give you a claimed range of about 340 kilometers. And then there's the single motor extended range version with a 69 kilowatt hour battery which should give you close to about 470 kilometers. Now in both these versions, the motors are mounted at the rear with performance outputs of 200 kilowatts and 343 newton meters of torque. And then there's this crazy little pocket rocket of leckiness that we have here, the ultra twin motor performance version, which also uses a 69 kilowatt hour battery and it should hopefully give you a range of close to 450 kilometers. And as mentioned in the name, it has twin motors one mounted to the front and one to the rear axle, giving you power figures of 315 kilowatts and 543 newton meters. Now, renowned motor journalist and car tester Mark Jones tested this car at Gerotech, posting figures of, well, 3.9 seconds from zero to 100, a 12.29 quarter mile time, 
crossing the line at 178 kilometers an hour and a 5.24 seconds acceleration test from 60 to 140 kilometers an hour. Now you see what I mean when I say hot hatch performance, even though it's not a hot hatch, but I mean, it gives you all of that for under a million Rand. Now that's quiet. Now the whole minimalist vibe continues here at the back of the Volvo EX30. There's no handle to lift it up, but it simply has a button that you press and then, well, the boot will open, which is really good, right? But it, it kind of has a feature that I don't really like because this is a proximity key, meaning that when you get close to the car, the car automatically locks or unlocks if you walk away from it, which is very good. The only issue with that is, is that you can't just quickly run to the car to go and get something out. You always have to take the key with you. And when that happens, the car is automatically on. Meaning all you gotta do is to put your foot on the brake, hit the driver's stalk and off you go, which again is a good thing, but it's also kind of a bad thing. Because if you quickly wanna send your, like in my case, my eight year old nephew to go and, well, get something out of the car, that dude's gonna drive off in the car. So. I would prefer to have buttons on this remote. You know, I mean, even though I, I don't really like to complain about buttons because I think they're kind of old fashioned and we are moving on with tech, but, but yeah, with, with my nephew, I mean, I have to hide this key and not trust him to go near a car like this. Now Volvo went on a minimalistic approach, that word again, when it comes to this car, even with this, um, tablet screen display with just one single mounted display right here, which runs a Google Android operating system, which is a lot better than the versions that's in its siblings because it feels a lot more, you know, modern. Its menus are overall really good and great. It's, it's like using a big mobile phone, but it does have a couple of weirdnesses. For example, there are only four buttons in this car, physical buttons, and it's not found anywhere here in this tablet display or even used in the infotainment system. But I'll explain that in a couple of moments. You see everything you need to access, including the speedometer, the hazards, the mirror controls, the aircon systems, even the center mounted glove box, is all accessible right here from this menu. So whatever you need to do is just to access it from the screen. Now I know most people don't really like it because initially it kind of freaks you out. But once you realize this is just a big, either phone or Android tablet, then you've got it sorted. Uh, the steering though does have capacitive buttons, which you control the volume, including your, your driving modes and cruise control. It's got reach and rake, so it's easy to adjust. And then it even has its um, drive selector stalk right here on it. So park, reverse, drive, neutral, all of it is in here. I like the way the steering wheel looks. It's kind of squared on top and round on the sides. It, it's futuristic. I know Peugeot has been doing that for a while, but it works in this car. And then those four buttons that I mentioned to you is, well, um, it's two in the front here and two in the rear, and they are there to, guess what, control the windows. It's not even in the doors. It's right here. And you can control the rear from here as well, but you gotta hit a button. But I mean, it's weird, but still funky, minimalistic. There are four interior trim levels that you can choose from, all inspired by the Scandinavian nature. Now, uh, this one has the indigo trim level into it, inspired by the Scandinavian nightfall. It even has themes and you can change the colors to match it. The seats here in front are electronically controlled as well as heated and also cooled. And it can even warm your hands on the steering wheel on a cold winter's morning. Now in the center, we have this floating armrest, which has two, well, cup holders in here, which looks very cool and fancy when it's out. And you can even make it at it's only one. There's storage space down here as well, where you can put things like your wallet and a whole bunch of other things as well. Um, and also a very convenient place to store your phone, which by the way, offers wireless charging. There's two USB ports down here as well, uh, USB-C ports, so you can charge whatever it is. Apple CarPlay is available, but Android Auto isn't. But you don't really need it because you see, with this Google-powered Android system, all you gotta do is to log in with your credentials. I mean, you can pair it to your phone, hotspot it or use whatever, but once you pair it, you log in with your Google details you can customize it and download whatever apps it is for you. 
It all looks clean, it's sleek, futuristic and, well, minimalistic as it is. That word again. Talking about that whole minimalistic thing, it's so, it's so weird. There's no speakers in the doors. Uh, just like with the window buttons, it's none. And nothing in the rear. It just has this Harman Kardon sound bar in the front, like you would have at home. And you can somehow create an effect that you can control it to the front, the rear, or everywhere. And it sounds epic. This is very cool. It, yeah, it's like a little spaceship. In the rear though is the only place I think is where this car lacks a little. I mean, even for my short legs, I, I kind of feel a bit of a tight squeeze in here. And it's even worse because people like me with extra baggage, you feel like you're sitting too straight up. So it feels a little bit, bit awkward. It's, it's, it's not a comfortable way to sit, to be quite honest. There are no air vents or aircon controls here at the back, but there are two USB charging points and you're able to control the windows from here as well. But there are no cup holders in here. The only thing that I found is, well, this storage tray thing in the middle with a, with a moose on it. Um, but, but that's about it. No cup holders. There are seat belts for three people, but clearly you can't fit three people in here. But you can put in two car seats because it's got um, Isofix points in here. What does make it a little bit more bearable in here is this panoramic sunroof because it creates that, that, that feel of like more space. But honestly, I do think that they took the whole minimalistic vibe just a little bit way too serious out here in the back. The boot gives you a total of 318 liters of space, which is good enough for two large suitcases. Below, you'll find space for your charging cables as well as your tire repair kit. With the rear seats down, the space increases to just over 900 liters. In the front boot, there's about 7 liters of space, which could be used to, again, store your cables or whatever you deem could fit in there. A typical charge from 0 to 100% with 11 kilowatt AC fast charging type 2 unit or 3 phase 16 amp will take anything between 6 to 8 hours. DC fast charging is available up to 175 kilowatt fast charging. That could take you from 10 to 80% up to 26 minutes. Sadly though, we don't have charges that fast in South Africa, so expect anything between an hour to two hours for full charge. Getting behind the wheel of the Volvo EX30 for the first time is going to be quite intimidating for anyone. And that is all because of this whole minimalistic, and word again, feel inside of this car. You see, there's no driver display in front of you and it's something that all of us become used to it. And it's not there, you kind of go in this weird, panicky kind of mode. But everything is available on the central display. And if you've driven things like an old Conquest, a Conquest, a Yaris or an Etios, if you've driven those things, they had the displays, the speedo here in the middle. So you kind of get used to it really quickly because that's what's happened for me. Um, then there's, yeah, the view out the front and the rear and on the side, it's really good. The rear is a little bit limiting because of the slanted back and it being kind of small, but those are things again that you can get easily used to. This car rides on 20 inch wheels, which means, um, you know, just living with it every day is going to be easy. I mean, it, it's typical Volvo. The whole drive, ride is really smooth. It's comfortable. Uh, it absorbs all the imperfections in the road quite easily. I mean, like where I am right now, this is a bit of a country back road, right? It's, it's kind of a little bit limiting and lots of potholes and bumps in it, but it, it's handling it all really well. It's turning circles. 11 meters i just made a a u-turn and it was very easy i mean 11 meters it's like nothing uh, especially if you like me drive a, a a double cab bucky then you have um the one thing that kind of a lot of people complain about is some of the the safety features that are on this car and i, and I don't understand why they complain about it. yes some of them are a little bit annoying like the speed warning like if you go over a certain speed it will it will beep at you another thing that'll beep you beep at you is the um it's this thing that it checks to make sure that you're paying attention while you're driving and it beeps and you can turn it off it's a bit annoying but it is okay you know um 
but it's safety features that you need. So things like lane keeping assist, it's, it's always a good thing. It's got 360 degree cameras, it's got front and rear collision mitigation, and it will warn you, for example, if um, you're parked and you want to open up the door and there's maybe a car or a cyclist coming past, it will do all of those things. And yes, a lot of people will say, oh no, but that's just, it, it's annoying, do we need it all? The answer is simple, yes. We do need all of those safe, safety features in cars like this because of the performance of this car. I mean, even for me at times, like just putting the foot down, just the way it handles, it is, it's hectic. And because I prepared myself for it, I kind of understand what I need to do or what I need to look out for. But in a situation where you're gonna just floor it and think, oh, it's gonna be just for fun, you, you could come short. Yes, we do need all these safety features. And because this is a Volvo, you know it's gonna be, well, safe, right? Okay, so now that we've all got that stuff kind of out of the way, let's talk about this car's, well, party trick. And that's the, it's acceleration that it has, that the, the pure power to accelerate as quickly as what it does, the ability to humiliate some really fast, high-performance cars. I mean, Volvo claims 3.6 seconds. When Mark Jones tested it, it was 3.9. And either way, that is really, really quick, right? It is, it's unbelievable. And it's hard to kind of put it on, on camera, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. And then we're gonna just accelerate and see how quickly go. Okay, here we go. Stopping and go. Ugh. That is insane. It is absolutely insane. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's insane and it's exhilarating. <laughs> Do you know what it feels like? Because it's hard to kind of put on camera, right? It's like, you know when you were a kid and you were walking with your group of friends and then you're always being kind of stupid, you're walking fast and then somebody comes and then they, they push you in your back and you kind of like Ugh, stumble and like you're gonna almost fall, right? But you manage to keep your balance but you still look cool doing it, right? That's exactly what that kind of feels like. I know it's weird. I don't know how to, how to get it completely, but it, it literally just shoves you back in your chair. It's, it's insane, the acceleration on this car. And I love it. So besides the crazy acceleration that this car has, it's actually a very pleasurable, comfortable drive all around, even on this undulated little bit of a gravel patch that I'm driving on right now. It's a pleasurable drive every single time. And on top of that, it's really, really safe. It's really good looking, especially in black. And then you also get things like, for example, a five-year, 100,000 kilometer warranty and maintenance plan, an eight-year, 160,000 kilometer warranty on your battery. And if you watch any of my other um, videos about you know EVs you'll know that operating a EV is a lot cheaper than a ice powered car now if you don't want all this power then you can use the EX30 that'll probably be the best option for you the single motor long range version but if you're like me and you want a car that's going to give you hot hatch performance that will rival you know all the high performance car, then this twin motor performance version is for you. And you can get all of that for just under a million rand at 995,900 rand. Plus, it's kinder to the environment and it won't annoy your neighbors when you pull up and have to vroom vroom the whole time. Now, all that I have to do is to go play the lotto, win a million bucks, and get me one. So, if you guys can probably give me some lotto numbers, you know to be appreciated. Oh yeah, and um, please click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.